Nanga Sudi, not Santo Puraba. Papa say Gambas. Go on, you did that. In a cat, you take a body. Javica Melita, I did you suffer. Oh, my need day, Manago, you did it. For Gambas, you tell me to eat it. That's what you got here to eat. No one will have one up for Yagano with Yaga to take it. Oh, Yagala, I got Sanga me <laughs> yes, how are you? How have you been? Yeah, we are good. You are good, yes. yes. How is it here? How is it We village? are trying. You are trying. The village is there uh -huh. a bit dry. Okay. Yeah, we are rain is mm. rain is yeah. but not in a good way. Yeah. Sometimes it rains, it takes a week, yeah. then it shines until the whole, the, all the water is over in the soil. Yes, mommy, we came here to, to visit you, uh, most especially to, to visit you because it's our first time being here. You've supported uh, um, your son, Henry Subi, uh, with his siblings. I know you've come to us, but we have never paid a visit to you. Uh, because you know COVID, the lockdown and a lot of challenges that were at hand. So today we decided to pay you a visit to know um, how did you survive, uh, how have you managed to bring up a son, uh, Henry Subi himself, and how have you managed as a mother, we know, because we happen to know you're a single mother, yes. you're the father and mother of these children, one girl and two boys, these three boys. How have you managed in this situation? I have as eight girls. Five girls, three boys. Wow. <laughs> they, taught up, they taught up to eight. They taught up to eight. She's an African woman. Yes. <laughs> She's a real African woman and uh, she has really eight children. Most welcome. Thank you. I'm she has... very glad to see you here. Yes, we are very happy. I, I always miss you. When I ring you, the way you talk, yes. eh, I feel you are really kind to us. We are very humbled. Thank you very much for supporting Subi. Yeah. And, and the brothers, when the girls bring their shoes, the boys, then afterwards, even the neighbors benefit. Yes. Because they, when they get the new shoes, they give to the neighbors, the old ones. The old ones. Yes. Wow, that's, that's, that's that interesting. That they appreciate even the neighbors. That's very interesting. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, somebody receiving and then they are able to, yes. to give back. When you told them, the old if one, you yeah. get, you, you receive, you give. Yes. So they came here at home. They told him, I also encouraged them to give out. Wow. They gave to their, the neighbor here, they gave me a pair, the old one, the first they got. Uh -huh. I took it to my school. Uh -huh. I gave a certain boy. Uh -huh. uh, ah, that's very so good, you know. That means uh, many people benefit from you. Wonderful. We are very humble. Uh, yeah. That beneficiary, the first beneficiary, so made others also to benefit. So that means eh, if somebody gets eh, something good, it might help the whole village. Yeah, true. They are encouraging people not to be jealous. Because if your neighbor's son gets something, you can also benefit. Yeah, true. So that's what I encourage people to do. You know, it's, it's beautiful, you know. Um, as you see that uh, we came in to support these children who have no shoes, uh, because you know, as Subi, um, just to give you a little background, when you know he featured on Twitter, and because he arrived at a university uh, where most children have never seen a, a, a young man arriving at the university with a metallic suitcase uh, with that bag that goes to the market for him, he was taking it to the university. So, um, as, as we came in to help Subi, we, we decided also to help because we knew by the time Subi arrives in that manner, which means his little siblings are also not well. So it's, they are very bad off. So that's why we came in 
and we supported this mom when when we had never even arrived at her house. So today we decided to say, let's go and check out this lady. After how many years? After many years. <laughs> but we said, let's pay cut as a call. Yeah, and, and of course, when they met me, I told these little children, I said, yes, I know you're lacking, you don't have. But the best way is, once you get something new, give us, give uh, the other one that is still working to someone, a neighbor, a friend, a, you know, anyone who is lacking. And I'm happy that the mom is telling us that yes, the children took up my, my advice and they are able to also pass on the old, you know, the old shoes to their friends. And that instills a lot of hope, instills a lot of compassion and empathy uh, in these children. So out there, if you're out there and supporting, and you want to support anyone, of course, at the end of the day, we have to instill this in our African children or anyone out there in the world who can be able to give the little they can to those who don't even have. Because I believe at any one time, we are all better than others. No matter the level we are at, there is somebody who doesn't have whatever we have. So, yes, as a single mother, how have you managed all these eight children as a single-handed mother? How have you managed? Because someone will ask, how do you manage to take over these children? So we came from this village, passed to the university, where many did not expect him. Probably he was from a rural school, which we are going to visit because we want to see his former school where he came from. How did he manage to go to university? And what tactic or what what trick are you using as a mother to nurture this children? Sad for me. I get hard time to do that. It's really hard for me. Because I struggle a lot up to the extent that I feel I can't manage. But in my heart, I ask myself, that, but who is going to help me? So, what I do, I trust in God. I just say, God, help me to be healthy so that I can struggle. And I do a lot of work to many things I do. Really, sometimes I say, am I a person? To do this work, I do work for about four men because I manage my work. I do my work as a woman. I do my the work of a man in the home. I do the work of children. You know, children when they wake up, you just prepare them to go at school. You wake them up. You you give them what to eat. You encourage them to move before it's late. So that is also hard for me. Because if I just wake up and you move, I move out to do my work, when you come back, the children are late for school. So I do many things to see that I manage the children. Even bringing them up to train them being good behaved, that's also hard. But they work when they go to school. I, go, I also move to go to my school to work. When I come back home, I do many things. Like then, I go to the garden, I first dig. Yeah? Then after digging, when there is coffee, you also plan to, to get off the coffee. You, you harvest the coffee quickly. Then when it becomes dark, I move quickly home to, to prepare a supper. For me, I prepare a supper very quickly, because when you do, you do it slowly by slowly, the time the supper is ready, everybody is asking. <laughs> so I always do in a hush, I hush it in, a, in a, a very harsh way. So within 30 minutes or one hour, the food is ready. They eat. When they go to their bed, some of them revise. But others do what? They wake up in the middle of the night to revise. So there, when they, I make sure that they are asleep, they are okay. Sometimes we have those small ticks. Are they already inside? So for me, I live outside to enter the house when I'm very tired. I enter the house. 
at around 10, 10, 30. Then I bed. I always enter the bed at 12. Getting money for me is hard. Because I move, I even, I even move, I always sight where there is money. Every time I feel I have to be with money in my pocket. So when the pocket is dry, I don't want it. I don't want that. I just move. I always collect the brooms. Then I move. I say, today I must go. There is a certain island I go. We call it Riga. Then there I go. I find a way to sleep. I get friends there. Okay. I don't let a house there. Yeah. But I just there. I just put on a smile. By the way, help me and get me where to sleep. Yeah. I spend there some three days collecting the rooms. The inside the rooms. Sometimes I go with my little boys, those two boys yeah. whom you support. We collect, we come back. After putting there in the what? In the compound, they are drying up. There I find another thing. I go for firewood. I have a, a shop there. Then put it there. Yeah. It is so active. Only that capital sometimes is not there. Because whatever you get there, somebody comes home, mommy, no book, you give. Mommy, the, 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 the what? The calculator is out of use. You give out. So the whole bake of firewood gets off. Because of the it problem. gets over when you don't have the capital to buy another one. Then sometimes I tell my my son, so this have something. Then if you have something, give me and I bring the firewood. When we sell the ten, we send it to you for what to eat. Because we there when I get money from him, it's for his what? Upkeep. Yes. So I always send it back. You know, you see how capital is going. Because he borrowed you. Yeah. You have to give you, it back. You have to give back. <laughs> that yes. means the capital is not there. Yes. As I'm talking now, I've remained with very few pieces to, to sell. So I just want to take those ones there so that I add on until I get the capital. Yes. To, to, to do what? To bring the whole vehicle. I bring this big one for 1M. Yeah, when you put it there for one A, you sell for three months. Yeah. So that's how I get money. That is another business. Then I also have a tap, water tap there. And that is what? Around the, that shop where I sell the what? The firewood. It also helps us. Then when I come here, coffee, then the Avocado there, it is also supporting us. Yeah. yeah. I take to the, the, the trading center, but they are very cheap. Mm. Sometimes uh, I feel <laughs> because they take you take a ten, mm -hmm. they give you only two thousand. Ten pieces of avocado. Uh, yeah. And two thousand. Sometimes I'm discouraged to take. Yes. I put their children eat. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Um you're a single mother who has been there with an experience. Yeah. I want you to look in the camera. Yes. And encourage a single mother. Let's talk about a single mother who is in Kampala. Yeah. Or a single mother who is in the village somewhere who is watching you now. Yes. Who has lost hope because she feels being a single mother is bad or being a single mother uh, they have lost their sense of, uh, uh, of, of, of belonging as, as a woman. What do you encourage? What, do you, what, what would you give to a single mother? Who is going through tough times and challenges at this moment? You as a mother that has been in that situation. First of all, what I encourage a single mother to do, be a God-fearing mother. Always trust in God. That God is not talking, he's not, you can't see, but he's around. Every time he's around seeing you, how he struggle. He's the one to care for you. So afterwards, God gives you the Holy Spirit to come and give you the, the what? The solution. 
God gives you the solution. Whenever you think about God, you tell God, help me. You see God telling you, you can't do this. You move on. You move. Then it's where you say, God has told you. You go to a certain island. There is something you can get. You go and bring this. You go to somebody who will give you an advice. For example, you can have a sick child. You've lost her hope. One time I was sick myself. I had lost hope. I moved it to four people. Each person was telling me a different thing, a different thing. But God was telling me, move to another one. I went to another one until I reached the fourth one. The last person is the one who gave me the best solution. Again, what I encourage single mothers to do, avoid wasting time. Don't waste time moving on, up and down. You move to, 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 to the neighbor. You, give, you move to the nearest shop. You move the whole day you are moving. Eh? Then in the, in, in the evening, you have nothing to eat. So, waste your time. You should not waste time. What you do every time, you think about what to do. Uh, a, a, you know, a single mother can walk in the neighborhood and say, do you have anything to wash? The mother yeah. can wash for you and yeah. earn money. You see, that money you earn, you can be able to look after your children, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, we are very humbled uh, visiting you and uh, um, we look forward to coming to visit you all the time. And we are very impressed of your encouragement uh, out there and whatever you've given us uh, as, 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 you know, as, as a piece that we can carry out with also our viewers and our supporters uh, out there. This lady, we've had her talk, she has expressed her challenges. If somebody is to come in and help you, for example, let's say somebody wants to touch the life of the mother, of a single mother out there in Kamengo. Is this Kamengo? Yeah. In Kamengo. Kamengo, Chiswa village. Chiswa village. And somebody wants to come and say, I want to visit, you know, um, Mama Suri. If somebody wants out there to, to help you as a single mother, what would you want to say? What would you, what would you want somebody to come in and help you? In case somebody out there, you know, we are viewed by so many people out there in the world, in the US, in Canada, uh, in Australia, in Nigeria, in Ghana, in, in Kenya, in South Sudan, in Tanzania, everywhere. If somebody out there says, I want to come and visit this lady and see her life, what would you request out there for that person to help you? Really, there are many. So, for me, what I request somebody, if somebody comes to add me some capital, some capital in my what? In my business. Because the way I do my business is, it's my, it's my house, the family house. That family house is not good. It is not, it needs a lot of renovation. So, renovation, then capital inside, capital outside in my firewood, that's, that is good for me. Because there I can make a lot of money from my capital. My, from my shop, if I get capital, I can get money. Because giving you money, this hard cash, it makes you lazy. so excited. And, lazy. and you do things which you couldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> then, then, <laughs> but there, are there things you can do when you get money which you can't do at your age? Are they there? Yeah, they are like, there. Like which one? Like those children. <laughs> they are all teenagers. Uh -huh. They tell you, Mommy, at least you first give me this. <laughs> I do this. <laughs> and I love them so much. You love them so when much. When they ask me for money, <laughs> I give them. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't get excited. You give your son. You give yeah, them, yeah, I give the daughters. Yeah. They buy things. What, what Mobile they, phone. Yeah. <laughs> Smartphone. Mobile <laughs> they, they, they watch shoes. <laughs> the dresses and so what so another thing that house you see it the condition it is in we managed to put in it is now shining there is electricity there. Yeah. but that 
we call it a water solid. It passes via the road. It goes through the road. So when the long vehicles come, they knock the what the, the solid. solid. So we need the what our what our pole there, yeah. so that we get a pole and we don't close the road. Yes. Again, in the house, the condition is bad. Yes. <laughs> it is leaking. The what the the, the the iron sheets are very old. So, in fact, we need a lot of very. Yeah. <laughs> but those are the immediate ones. Immediate ones. The children I take to school these days. It is not good. It's not easy. It's not good. Yeah. Because as COVID came in, there's something I don't know what happened. We th we had our some sponsors somewhere. Oh, I don't know whether they died. <laughs> Whenever you contact them, they are nowhere to be seen. Yeah. So maybe COVID hit them. Eh, yeah, COVID yeah. might have hit them. So that means even school fees he had for me. Yeah. These, these days, because as, as per now, there is, we are going to school busy for my school. Yeah. There's a girl there, as those people are so kind to us, the school fees defaulters, even mine is there. Yeah. He's among the defaulters. <laughs> But after that, they are kind to us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they take time to send that girl at home. Yeah. But as I'm talking now, this time I've not yet paid a single coin. The last time she remained with the, with the about 180. Yeah. So the, the debt is about 400. Get there. Yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, as you hear uh, from Mam Subi, uh, if you're out there, she's a single mom has struggled, and um, I, I love the encouragement that she gave uh, to the single mothers. So if someone out there wants to support her, she, she speaks English, and uh, here you can even go through direct to her. She can even send her number, and then if somebody wants to to support her, it goes direct to, to her phone number. You can contact us. Then we can be able to give you the details uh, of her, and then you can be able to support her direct, uh, direct to her. Uh, if the support comes in, please you can always uh, support her directly. This, thank you so much, and uh, we are pleasured being here, and it's our visit here to see uh, that uh, yes, we make that touch with her. It is good when it is part of life, guys. Um, our cassava, our original cassava, and um, very, very organic, sweet, organic, original, just boiled without any challenges. I know that many people would say, ah, cassava is a problem. No, we love it. And um, yes, we came in here, she gave us a meal. We are happy. And we appreciate our visit to this home. And those who have supported our movement, as the Bravo Shoes Community support, we are very, very humbled. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I send you greetings from Kamengo. My name is Henry Subichimba, a student of Makele University doing a Bachelor of Science in uh, Mechanical Engineering at the Engineering School. Um, this is Kamengo, where everything started from. Uh, this is our home place, uh, where we grew up from. Um, I moved from here in 2019 uh, after finishing my high school uh, in a, a, a school nearby, St. Bruno Selunkuma Secondary School, Goli. Um, then I got a scholarship to 
move and further my studies uh, in Makele University. But that was Bachelor of Science uh, in, with uh, uh, education, and that was economics and uh, mathematics. So when I, 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 it came time to move from uh, Kamengo here to go to Makere University, uh, I had a limited choice of what I could go with and what I could uh, use as me when I was leaving. So that, that, that's when the idea of using a metal suitcase came in. So I, 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 I picked it up with uh, my, what is, they call it, a famous Osofia bag, then uh, I moved. So for me, in the beginning, I didn't think it was a strange idea to take a metal suitcase to high institution, uh, but then people found it strange after someone posted a pic of me arriving at what we call University Hall, my hall of attachment, where the, the, the picture became viral and uh, it happened that it became famous. So everyone wanted to know who was behind the, the famous picture. So. In a few months, in a few weeks, everything was open in such a way that in a few days I arrived in on a Saturday, but then in that same week I arrived in uh, the Vice Chancellor's office due to the request of people on social media who wanted to know what was happening with the person who was holding a metal suitcase. So that's when everything started happening, that's when I arrived on social media, then I arrived on media outlets. So it started with NTV where I, uh, I appeared on their news and uh, that story was covered by Olivia Komgisha. So, and people came up. So it started with, um, when everything started, I appeared uh, on uh, the Facebook page of the Vice Chancellor of Macquarie University where People picked up from that, so the request came from uh, the BBC journalist Alan Kasuja. So it interested a lot of people. So I got in touch with uh, people like Cedric Babu, people like Luther Ine, who came out to give a hand and know what was really happening and to support me. So in that whole thing, I got a scholarship to to change my course. You know. When I arrived at Macquarie University, I was on government sponsorship, but the course wasn't really good for me. I, I, I didn't have love for it. So I, I had a leak. Someone contacted me from Jawada Consult, and that was um, the CEO, Jawada Consult, Mr. Aita Joel, who is an engineer. So when I hinted about wanting to study engineering, he came up to sponsor me in the engineering school and he has been sponsoring me ever since I joined Makai University. So that actually means that I didn't even attend school in the education side. So when I arrived, I started the orientation in the, the, in the side of education, but at the end of it all, I ended up in the engineering school where I'm, I'm now offering Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. So. In my journey, a lot of people came up to give support to me and um, everyone came up in their capacity. Those who could afford what they could came up, others gave hard cash and others gave emotional support, others give advice, others give what they have. So in that whole situation in 2019, I received a call from Blavo Shoes and uh, they, they were offering shoes for four years for me and for my other siblings so i had to they, they were reaching out to me so that's what they could afford to support me for to from that angle so i had to go and meet up with them so they have been giving me shoes ever since i joined university with my other siblings and uh, later because their community their charity organization had moved and they had gotten a lot of kids so they had to switch from Blavo Shoes to Blavo Shoes Community Support where now they could use the organization Blavo Shoes Community Support to reach out to a number of kids involving I, my siblings and other kids around the country. So 
we grew up in a situation where we we don't have a lot we don't have much so we grew up in a situation where everything was challenging for us so whatever someone comes up to offer it's always beneficial to us because it pushes us a step further to where we have been so my siblings when Blavo shoes stepped in so he came up to offer shoes for them for their school time and then he came up to offer me shoes for my university time because for me I was at the end of my academic life so I was joining the university so for me it's four years and for them it's more than four years because it's covering their entire school time most of them are still in two of them are still in primary and one is soon joining campus so that's how we benefit for them it was a challenging situation because i remember the shoe the shoe i had when i was joining campus was a shoe i was using in high school but i had no choice for me i just take it as easy as that whatever i have is what i go with so that's what everything happened and i can now put on some nice shoes and uh, i can feel comfortable from where i moved from <laughs>